In this lesson, we're going to learn some logarithm laws. Um, one thing to remember about logarithms is that they're very much related to exponents. So in grade 9, you learn about exponent laws. You learn about the product law of exponents, the quotient law of exponents, and the power law of exponents. Uh, you learn some other ones, but those are the three major ones. So um, we have the same laws, but they're for logarithms instead. So the first one we're going to start with is the power law of logarithms. So the power law of logarithms states that this is true. Okay, so log base b x to the power of n is equal to n times log base b of x. Now, of course, there are restrictions on b and x, uh, which we're going to get to later on, but they're the same restrictions that we talked about earlier when we introduced logarithms. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to prove the power law of logarithms. So let's see. So we let w equals log base b of x. So if that is the case, then um, b, sorry, x is equal to b to w because we wrote in exponential form. We uh, raise both sides to the power of n, and then x to the power of n is equal to b to the power of wn because uh, you multiply powers when you have a power of power. Sorry, you multiply the exponents when you have a power of a power. We write in exponential form. And if you replace w with log base b of x, you get the law, uh, power law of logarithms. Okay, so I really want you to look at the power law of logarithms and see how it's related to the power law of exponents. Because the power law of exponents says when you have a power of a power, you multiply the exponents. This is basically saying the same thing. Yes, uh, you don't see uh, powers and exponents, um, but really this is saying that when you have a power of power, you multiply the exponents, okay? Because it's x to the power of n, right? So you, you tr basically treat it as a constant multiple when you move it to the front, okay? Now it's a constant multiple, and re remember what a logarithm is, right? A logarithm is quite simply an exponent. So this is an exponent, well, it used to be part of your exponent, and now this is also an exponent. So this is really related to what you learn in grade nine, which is when you have a power of power, you multiply exponents, okay? You're really just multiplying the exponents here. Anyways, you can take a look at the proof if I went too fast, or you can uh, really slow it down and try to relate it to the grade nine concept. So the summary is here. You have uh, what we stated earlier about the power law of logarithms. So b, of course, has to be greater than zero. The base of the logarithm has to be greater than zero and not one. Otherwise, the logarithm is undefined. And of course, the argument x has to also be greater than zero. And n, which is the exponent, has to be a real number. OK, so let's use the power law of logarithms. So for log base 3 of 9 to the power 4, you could, you know, figure out what 9 to the power of 4 is and then ask yourself 3 to the power of what is that number. But what you can do is uh, apply the power law of logarithms because you might not know what 9 to the power of 4 is. So log base 3 of 9, so it's 4 times log base 3 of 9. You apply the power law of logarithms and now this becomes a much easier question. Three raised to the power of what will give you 9? And the answer is obviously 2. So 4 times 2, 8. Same thing, apply the power law of logarithms. So 5 times log base 2 of 8, and this is 3, right? Because 2 cubed is 8, so the answer is 15. Uh, over here, we can use the power law of logarithms. So this is 0 0.001. So 10th, 100th, 1,000th. Okay, um, so when I write as 1 over 1,000, it's very obvious to me that 10 to the power of negative 3 will give me 1 over 1,000. So negative 6. Uh, log base 5 of square root of 125. So when you square root, that's a rational exponent of 1 half. So that's a... Uh, Hopefully something you didn't rem you didn't forget from uh, from last year. So rational exponents, um, yeah, you can you apply the power law of logarithms to make your life a little easier. 
So 5 to the power of 3 is 125, so 3 over 2. Uh, and you can use your calculator to check. Um, now actually, right now you could only use your calculator to check this one, because remember what we said earlier about your calculator? Your calculator has two bases, okay? Uh, it has logarithm of base 10 and another irrational number that you'll, ta you'll learn about in calculus. Um, you, you don't have, for example, a log base 2 button, but you know what? We're going to solve that problem uh, on the next page. And now that you know the power law of logarithms, you can go back to your logarithms homework and uh, you can uh, use those, use this, use this logarithm law to help you evaluate some logarithms that you may not have done before. Because now, like, this square root, you don't have to think as hard. Like, you don't have to jump from here, this, this question, straight to 3 over 2. You can break it down to parts. You can move the, the square root to a constant multiple of half and then uh, slowly work the work with the logarithm. Because what we did earlier on the logarithm homework sheet, you would ask yourself five to the power of one is square root of 125. Uh, you can still get three over two, but there's a lot more um, uh, steps that you're doing in your head. Um, so yeah, uh, make use of the power law of logarithms. So the next little, um, uh, this is not the, a law, but it's called the change of base formula. This will also help us work with logarithms. So we're going to learn a bunch of different little tools which we can use to help us work with logarithms because eventually we're going to solve logarithmic equations. Anyways, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Let's learn the change of base formula. So we already had the problem. Uh, our calculator can do log 39, for example, but what our calculator can't do is log base 8 of 45. Now I know some calculators can do it, but I'd argue most of the calculators cannot do it. So how can you work with log base 8 of 45 from your calculator? So we have this really, really handy dandy formula called the change of base formula. It's very powerful. It basically takes any logarithm you have and you can change the base to whatever number you desire. Okay, so let's learn the change of base formula. Okay. So, how does this change of base formula work? So we have our uh, logarithm here, it's equal to x, and then we rewrite it in exponential form. Now, you take the common log of both sides, so log base 10 of both sides, and now uh, you apply the power law of logarithms, so instead of log of b to the x, it's now x log b, and they can isolate for x, and then divide both sides by log b. So, what is x again? x is log base b of m. So, log base b of m, log m, log over log b. Okay? We, here, we've demonstrated, we changed the base to a, a base of 10. Okay? So, it used to be a base of b, now it's a base of 10. Now, why would you want to change it to base of 10? Because your calculator can work with the base of 10, okay? Did you have to change it to a base of 10? And the answer is no. So here, if you don't want a base of 10, for example, you want a base of two, what you could have done was instead of taking the common log, you take the logarithm of base two to both sides, okay? And then you can change the base to two. You could change the base to three, four, five, six, anything you want, as long as it's greater than zero and not one, okay? So, uh, for this handout, we're going to change it to base 10 because we want to evaluate. So evaluate each logarithm to three decimal places. So if you don't have a special calculator that can do a base of 8, no problem. So log base 8 of 58 is equal to log 58 over log 8. I applied the change of base formula. I changed it to a base of 10. So now I can evaluate. So log 58 over log 8. 1.953 approximately. So here, log 58 over log 2. About 5.858. Okay, I'm just going to punch it straight into my calculator. Log 10, which is 1, log 0.5, negative 3.322. Okay, log of one third divided by log of eight. 
Uh, be careful, put your argument in brackets, divide by log 8. So that's negative 0 0.528. All right, beautiful. And if you want to check your answer, just take 8 and raise it to the power of this number. So take 8, raise the power of this, the exponent, and guess what I should get? I better be getting 3. Oh, sorry, better getting 1 third, right? Because 1 third was the argument. So whenever you're in doubt, just uh, check your answer. All right, so these ones, I want to write it as a single logarithm, no problem. So uh, they're both a base of 10 here, so I can simplify to a single logarithm. If these logarithms and the numerator and denominator are not of the same uh, base, then I may not be able to do this. Definitely I can't apply the change of base formula, but since they're both a base of 10, I can express it as a single logarithm. So 1, 5 would be the base of, 1 over 5 is the base of logarithm, and 1 third is the argument. Here I just need to do an extra step. I'm going to apply the power law of logarithms first. So instead of 2 log 3, it's now log 9, because 3 squared is 9. And this denominator will be log uh, 4 cubed is 64. And now, since they're both the base of 10, here we go. Log base 64 of 9. So if they weren't the same base, I don't know, let's say... Um, then, then you can't simplify to a single logarithm, okay? Now, if it was 4 here, for example, instead of 3, if this was 4, um, you could change it to a base of, uh, to a base of 2. And technically speaking, I guess you can change this 3 to a base of 2. It would be more work, but if this was a 4, you can um, try this on your own time, but you can express this as a single logarithm because you can change a 4 to a 2 very easily. Um, you know what? Let's let's do it. This might be a little too much, but if, if, if I lose you, it's it's a very small detail. All I really want to say is right now I cannot apply this uh, change of base formula. That's all I really wanted to say. But that's not to say you can't make it work. Okay, so So I took the denominator, the logarithm denominator, and changed it to a base of 2. And then... You know what? I'll write it like uh, taking reciprocal of the denominator. Because log base 2 of 4 is 2, so I can use the power law of logarithms here. So log base 2 of 16, because 4 squared is 16. So now it's log base 5 of 16. So now I've circumvented the problem. It used to be different bases. It used to be a base of 2 and base of 4, so I can apply the change of base formula. But you can slowly work it using the change of base formula to change the bases such that they are the same. Anyways, that, that was much more than I intended. I, I personally just wanted to show you, you cannot apply the change of base formula if the bases are different. That's all I wanted to uh, show you, but then we went on a tangent. Okay, hopefully I didn't throw you off. So here I want to solve for x. So uh, change of base, oops, not change it, uh, logarithmic form first, log base 5 of 8. So the intention is that previously you couldn't evaluate this uh, logarithm if you didn't have a calculator that um, allowed you to change the base to whichever you want. So if your calculator only does base 10, now, you'll, now everyone can be able to evaluate this on their calculator. So log base 8 of 5, so, oh sorry, log base of 
5 of 8. Log base 5 of 8. So log 8 over log 5. Uh, about 1.292. Now saying that, I still prefer the exact answer. Uh, I would hardly ever ask you to give me uh, a rounded answer. Alright, so over here, divide both sides by 2. Lock the neck form. Once again, you can do this because you have a calc, you have the change of base formula. So log 15 over log 7 plus 5 over 4. So we're looking at about 1.598. Okay? So, uh, in this lesson, we talked about two big ideas. The power law of logarithms and the change of base formula. Both are just tools that will help you evaluate logarithms and later on help us solve logarithmic equations. So we're just gathering all the tools to help us answer uh, more challenging questions down the road.